Today, I am going to be taking a type of flyer, social media flyer for Mexican food, which is my favorite type of food. And I'm gonna be taking an old taqueria type of branding that really could use some improvement and updating it to appeal to a more broader customer base while still maintaining that authentic Mexican look. So I have my sketches already done in front of me. And what I'm looking for now is that center for that design, which is going to be a plate of tacos. So I have Adobe stock is what I use and I've typed in taco flat lay. And I've also specified in the filters on the left side that I only want images. I don't want it to be generated by AI, which is a great filter that I'm really glad Adobe has there. And so that's where I'm looking for is something that will be good and is a center there. Also, sometimes I need to upload images that I found and it will help me to find something exactly like that or similar so that I can have something that is close to my vision. Now, I already have this really cool wood background and now I'm using Photoshop 2023, which isn't always my favorite because I don't like their new gradient features there. And I usually use 2022, but there is a really cool feature with 2023, which removes background. So I can remove the background. So it's just the plate there. Now it doesn't do it perfectly every time, especially if it's a light background against a lighter object. So I'm just gonna go in and refine it and make sure it looks good and clean so I can use this as my centerpiece. I'm playing with different color backgrounds here of the green and different layer styles to give it the effect that I'm going for. I'm going to be doing three, a series of three of these social posts. So I'm gonna set the color palette of each of the posts so that it all aligns together and has this kind of Mexican vibe to it. So I'm going to use green and then I'm gonna use some kind of an orangey color and then a red. So those will be the color palettes that kind of have a similar tone and a similar saturation so that it will look consistent and have a nice overall look when you put them together. Now I'm going to have in each of these social posts, the main food, just so it's a subtle indication in the background. And I wanna use this cool kind of sans serif, long typeface. So I'm choosing Go Bold, which is one of my favorites for long, thin typefaces. And it's gonna be the background, not gonna be super visible, but if someone really looks deeply, they'll see it. Now I'm gonna be putting items to put around the frame to give it this kind of edge of, this is the food style, this is the food that is in the taco, but not making that the featured item. So I searched based on this image that I also had found earlier that I liked, and it has vegetables that are in the tacos. In order to do all the cutting out and the layout and the moving of the different items in Photoshop and in design, my Wacom makes it so much easier. So it's my companion here to create these awesome Mexican designs. And something you can do as a note is you can download a preview and test it out before you commit to buying that image. So that's what I like to do. You can even have that for PNGs where the background is transparent. Even though it's low resolution, you can still get a sense of what it's gonna look like, which if it doesn't work out, it saves you money of wasting it on that stock image. I'm making sure that the vegetables are gonna be balanced around the corners. I am leaving that bottom right one empty for the logo. And now we're gonna to go to InDesign and import this image. I love working with type in InDesign and there's a great feature which is type on a path, which works really nicely. So first I put my circle and then I'm gonna put the type on a path and you can find that tool in the tools bar on the left. And then I'm gonna use what is a really cool typeface called Cheddar Gothic. And I love this because it has this kind of grungy style to it that works well with trendy Mexican style food restaurants. So that's gonna be fun to do.
So I'm deciding to have this be hot and spicy on the top and then Taco Tuesday on the bottom. Then I'm gonna be putting this circle that goes so it looks like it's connecting the hot and spicy to the Taco Tuesday. This is where your anchor point tools in InDesign comes really in handy. So please definitely check that out if you haven't used that tool, the anchor points is amazing. Now in looking at this layout, I don't really like the balance. I feel like there should be a bigger balance on the bottom left with the top right, and then a smaller item on the top left. So I just swapped some things around in the Photoshop document itself. I imported that original Takaria social media post so that I could look at the logo because now I'm gonna be creating a new logo for them, which is kind of setting this branding tone of the modern, grungy, cool looking Takaria style. I'm using that same typeface that I did for Hot and Spicy for the logo. Now it's time to make the next of the series of three. It's gonna be a very similar process. I'm gonna make sure I get that color palette in there. And this one is gonna be for nachos. So that orange for cheese is very appropriate. So I'm gonna be switching out all the colors now. I'm gonna change the background and we're gonna to have to go hunt for nachos in the stock images. So now I'm gonna import it into InDesign and it's gonna say rich and creamy nacho Friday. So it'll be kind of consistent each day is featuring a different product, a different type of food. I'm going to be using some other aspects from that original stock image that we got for the Taco Tuesday one so that I can shake up some other vegetables and use some other elements without having to buy a new one because there's a lot of similarities in the vegetables that are in the tacos and the nachos. The only thing I'm gonna have to find are some jalapenos because that's a big feature in these nachos right on top. So now it's time to make burrito Sunday. I love burritos. And this one is going to be that red background. So we're gonna duplicate that page in InDesign, get it ready, and we're gonna go duplicate the Photoshop file as well. Gonna make it that red background, and we're gonna have to go do our search for a really yummy looking burrito. That burrito looks delicious. I would love it. I also love the texture of the plate. Now this one does have some corn in the burrito. So I wanna make sure that I have, since I want them to all look different with those accent vegetables around it, I'm gonna find some corn kernels that I can add to add some dimension, different colors in there. Also, I'm looking for a different type of vegetables because I think I used everything I could get out of that other one. All right, so importing it into InDesign, I'm gonna just adjust some placement on some of those vegetables around the corners, make sure it looks right and balanced. And there we have our three designs, the tacos, the nachos, and the burritos. I'm very hungry now for some really good Mexican food. 
So this is my Mexican twist on a modernistic design that still will appeal to those who like Mexican food and my Mexican husband approves of it. So got that stamp of approval. And just so you know, as an update, the reason I haven't been posting a lot on YouTube is because I've been working on a branding course. And in between running the, my design business and also doing the branding course, it is a lot of work. I wanna make this a really comprehensive course for you to be able to walk you through everything you need for that. So look for that coming up in the spring. And also I started a new podcast. So meanwhile, or while you're waiting for that to come out, Earning by Design, you can check it out on Spotify, on Apple, iTunes, and uh, those any place that podcasts are. And I'd love to have you there. It's all about freelance tips. And I'm very excited about having lots of helpful guests and insights to help you in your journey. I'd also like to give a big thank you to Wacom for sponsoring this video. Always, always will love my Wacom and it gets me, it's allowed me to do the designs I do. So thank you to Wacom and for each of you, I appreciate all of you and I hope you have a really great day and the rest of your week. Thanks very much and I'll see you next time.